In today's show, I'm going to be sharing with you a monster bull move, which means that the whales could secure the next Bitcoin price surge. And as crypto analyst Cole Garner updates us here, I think Bitcoin is ready. Suddenly, all my favorite leading indicators are lining up. Long and strong, over-the-counter supply is powerful alpha, one of the very best leading indicators I've ever seen. The more you think about it, the more it makes so much intuitive sense. It's gone and flipped full bull. And Plan B updated us, fifty to $60,000 Bitcoin since March. Patience is key. And Tech Dev shares his opinion that the Bitcoin cycles have rhymed more than not. Also breaking news, only 10% of the Bitcoin supply left to mine, which virtually means that 90% of the Bitcoin supply is already mined, which took 12 years to do so. Also in today's show, Galaxy Digital's Michael Navigratz is bullish on Bitcoin and names three tailwinds for the leading crypto asset. And in this new interview with CNBC, he goes on to share why Bitcoin is not trading as well as Ethereum right now, quoting him here. If you look at the Ethereum price, Ethereum still trades bullish. People see Ethereum as a technology bet and Bitcoin as a debasement of fiat currency bet. Also in today's show, Bitcoin to flip bullish under this one key circumstance. According to on-chain analyst Will and Clemente, quoting him right here, Bitcoin is below the short-term hodler cost basis, which currently sits at $53,000 until this is reclaimed. Not bullish. Not saying I'm a giga bear. Just cautious until the market shows me otherwise. Happy to flip bullish if reclaimed. Bearish confirmation would be failed underside recess of the ban. I'll be breaking all this down for you. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, Bitcoin, Ether, and all the major alts are currently correcting back in the red. But where's the Bitcoin price likely to go next? Find out all this plus so much more in today's show. Here come the news alerts. I drop a brand new episode every single day. If you like getting that crypto, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day just like this and real quick before i kick off today's show today's episode is brought to you by the ftx app formerly known as blockfolio i've been using this app literally every single day for the past few years it's the first thing i do when i wake up in the morning is check my crypto portfolio i personally love it because it's the easiest and fastest way to buy bitcoin ether and other top cryptocurrencies with zero fees truly making this a no-brainer and they're trusted by over six million people worldwide and over 200 plus countries around the world and have a special promo they're running right now where you can earn free crypto in every trade over 10 bucks here's how it works when you use my referral link in the description right down below every trade over ten dollars earns you a chance to get a random free coin and the more you trade the more you earn so what are you waiting for go ahead and use my referral link in the description right down below and download the ftx app today make some trades claim your free crypto and let's start stacking those sats shall we all right welcome back to another episode of crypto news alerts i'm your host jv how's it going crypto fam how at your boy in the live chat bitcoin wells are at the center of attention this week as buying and selling habits split the bitcoin price narrative new findings from on-chain analytics firm crypto quant show derivative investors are leading the way when it comes to bullish bets on the king of all crypto that's right the sick btc price indicator favors the bulls the second half of november produced a marked uptick in the buy slash sell ratio on major derivatives trading platform derivit and for contributing and analyst Cole Garner, this is a sure sign that the price action will react positively in the near term. As he shares in this Twitter rant here on Crypto Twitter, number one, I think Bitcoin is ready. Suddenly, all of my favorite leading indicators are lining up long and strong, as he points out right here in this chart. Number two, over-the-counter supply is powerful alpha, one of the very best leading indicators I've ever seen. The more you think about it, the more it makes so much intuitive sense. It's gone and flipped full bull. Number three, whale CVD just printed a strong bullish divergence too. This metric has evolved to be my go-to indicator over the course of this bull. It does not lie. Number four, take or buy sell ratio is sort of similar for perpetuals. Only recently did I discover the derivative exchange leaks alpha, well, perpetually, and they just opened up the monster long, as you can see here in this chart. And someone asked them, what's your target, sir? And Cole Gardner responded, $250,000 per BTC. So there you have it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the crypto analyst. And he also shares that these strong bullish trends in this metric have preceded every strong bullish price trend of this bull. And it just printed a monster bullish move. Now, this data ties in with other recent observations from the exchange fear against the backdrop of whale interest continuing throughout the price correction from all-time highs of around 69000 Now, here's an interesting fact. Exchange reserves more broadly are now at four-year lows, meaning exchanges have less BTC on their books than at any time since the old all-time highs of 20000 back in 2017. And on the flip side, however, lies with the stable coins, redemptions of those hit all-time highs of their own this week, with the implication that whales are hedging exposure to BTC. That's right. 
redeem stablecoin index indicates all-time high. Not sure if the whales are cashing out ahead of the market's volatility in response to the December 16th FOMC announcement, but that's also one of the uncertainties. Crypto quant contributor Dam Lim explained, and quoting him here, so far we still be careful until some uncertainties will be resolved. And this week we'll see the United States Federal Reserve meet to give signals on the future of quantitative easing in the form of asset purchases, something that could have a wide-reaching consequence for the macro and crypto markets alike. That's right, as Money Printer continue to go and checking out the latest from on-chain analyst Plan B, who updated us here, fifty to sixty thousand dollar Bitcoin since March. Patience is key. And checking out the latest from crypto analyst Tech Dev, he shares his opinion. Bitcoin cycles have rhymed more than not. And comparing this having cycle from 2020 to that of the previous cycles of 2016 and 2012, you can see history tends to rhyme. And if history rhymes, once again, we can expect a $240,000 Bitcoin price. And he also shares here, along with sentiment, daily Bitcoin RSI, which is the relative strength index, is also lower than at 29000 probably nothing, which is hinting of a massive hidden bullish divergence. And Tech Dev responded, yep, a big one. And before I break down our next breaking story of the day, only 10% of the Bitcoin supply left to mine, as well as Galaxy Digital's Michael Navigrats, bullish on Bitcoin and names three tailwinds for the leading crypto asset, as well as Bitcoin to flip bullish under one key circumstance, according to on-chain analysts, Will and Clemente. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, all the major cryptos are currently correcting and in the red. And you already know, BTFD, all freaking day, by the blood on these crypto streets. We have Bitcoin down 2% for the day, trading just above $48,600. We have Ether maintaining at about that $4,000 mark, down about 1% for the day. Solana down almost 3%, trading at $166. Binance Coin down 3%, trading at $547. And Cardano down almost 3 percent trading at a dollar 29 but all right now let's break down our next way of the day the total circulating bitcoin hit a significant milestone on monday morning one and a half years after the last bitcoin having as 90 percent of the maximum total supply has officially been mine congrats to all the bitcoin long-term hodlers where you at holla at your boy in the live chat now current data from blockchain.com shows bitcoin in circulation hit 18.899 million as of monday meaning only 10 percent of the total supply is left to mine while the first 90 percent of bitcoin Bitcoin took about 12 years to mine. The rest will take a little longer, obviously. Now, Bitcoin has a hard cap of 21 million coins, as we all know, set by its anonymous creator, Satoshi Nakamoto. This limitation is written in Bitcoin source code and enforced by network nodes. The hard cap on Bitcoin is critical to its value proposition as a currency and as an investment tool. And right here in this chart, you can see the total Bitcoin circulating supply currently at an all-time high. It's also important to note it'll take literally 119 years from now to complete the Bitcoin mining process due to the rate of producing new Bitcoin being cut in half every four years in a predetermined protocol execution, also known as the Bitcoin halving. And since the Bitcoin blockchain only creates new Bitcoin as a reward for miners verifying new blocks, the halving ensures less Bitcoin is produced as the total circulating supply increases. Basic supply and demand, fam. Since May of 2020, miners have earned 6.25 Bitcoin for every new block verified. This rate will decrease to 3.125 BTC per block in the next halving in 2024. And by 2040, the block reward will have reduced to less than 0.2 BTC, and only 80,000 Bitcoin out of 21 million will be left up for grabs. Now, the last Bitcoin will take close to 40 years to mine. Let that sink in. The last Bitcoin will take close to 40 years to to mine. The Bitcoin's price started the week with a fresh rejection of 50000 As the end of year close is fast approaching, it is almost 30% down from its all-time high of roughly 69000 reached back on November 10th at the time of this recording. Now, before I break down our next story of the day, Galaxy Digital's Michael Navigrats is bullish on Bitcoin and names the three tailwinds for the leading crypto asset, as well as Bitcoin to flip bullish under this one key circumstance, according to on-chain analyst Will and Clemente. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market cap. Sent just above $2.2 trillion with 73 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. The current Bitcoin dominance is 41.2%, with the Ether dominance at 21.3%. And checking out the top gainers within the top 100, we have Revain leading the pack up almost 35% for the day, trading at 1.2 cents, followed by Oasis Network up almost 7% for the day and 45% for the week, trading just above 30 cents, and OKB up almost 5% for the day, trading at $27.77. Now, which altcoins are you currently most bullish on during Q? 
for this bull run? Let me know in the comments right down below. And now checking out one of my favorite indicators is the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Shows we're currently rated a 28 out of 100 in fear. Yesterday was a 27, last week a 16 in extreme fear, and last month a 72 in greed. And if you're not familiar with the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, extreme fear can be a sign. Investors are too worried. That can be a great buying opportunity like we're witnessing right now, BTFD, buy that freaking dip. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for correction. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. Galaxy Digital's Mike Navigrats remains bullish on Bitcoin despite the flagship crypto's lackluster performance over the last few weeks. In a new interview on CNBC, Navigrats explains why Bitcoin is not trading as well as Ethereum right now. Quoting him here, if you look at the Ethereum price, Ethereum still trades bullish. People see Ethereum as a technology bet and Bitcoin as a debasement of fiat currency bet. And in spite of Bitcoin's weak price action, Navigrats continues to be optimistic about the prospects of Bitcoin as he names three macro tailwinds that can keep the king crypto from falling below that critical 40,000 level. Quoting him here, there are new players lining up to participate in this crypto economy from the Mideast to all over the US to pension funds. And so there is a bid below the market. It's an institutional bid. They've done their work. They're waiting to participate. I think people now have woken up that crypto is an asset class, that Bitcoin is a part of a crypto portfolio, that even if the Fed starts acting more hawkish, it's an amazingly complicated plane to land for Powell and Yellen. We've got a political environment that wants to spend more money. We have a monster budget deficit. And if you raise rates too fast, you're going to sink the economy. And no politician wants to do that. And so we have lost an apolitical Fed chairman. All Fed chairmen are now political just based on the deficit. This idea of independent central banking is now farce. And so Jay Powell can act tough for a while because he just got reappointed. But if he starts doing things that put Biden's reelection at risk, you're going to hear something. And to watch this entire interview with Michael Navigrass, check the show notes below the video in the description. And before I break down our final story of the day, Bitcoin to flip bullish under this one key circumstance, according to on-chain analyst Will Clemente. But first, I want to remind you to smash that show more button right below this video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the crypto market. This goes for all 1,000 plus videos right here on my YouTube channel. Also, some very helpful resources for you to plug into, including my daily letter, which goes out to over 30,000 subscribers every single day. To subscribe, visit letter.cryptonewsalerts.net. Also have a blog I update daily, which can be found at cryptonewsyes.com. Also be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day just like this and help me get to 100,000 subs. You can also follow me on all the major podcasts and platforms. We're currently receiving over 20,000 downloads per day. You can find me on Spotify, the home of the Joe Rogan Experience, or Apple's iTunes, or Google Play. And if you're listening to the podcast, be sure to check out the YouTube channel at cryptonewsalerts.net for the full premium experience with video. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is crypto news. Yes, and I'm also on TikTok, Telegram, and Facebook. So wherever you're at, be sure to follow me there. But all right, now let's break down our final story of the day. Popular on-chain analyst, Will and Clemente, shout out to Will, says Bitcoin will flip bullish once this metric reaches a key level. That's right. In Blockware Intelligence's latest newsletter, Clemente looks at the cost basis for short-term hodlers a Bitcoin cost basis as it pertains to on-chain analytics is the average price where a certain group of investors enter the market. Bitcoin investors are considered short-term hodlers if their coins are younger than five months. Quoting William Clemente here, Bitcoin is below the short-term hodler cost basis, which currently sits at $53,000 until this is reclaimed. Not bullish, not saying I'm a giga bear, just cautious until the market shows me otherwise. Happy to flip bullish if reclaim. Bearish confirmation would be a failed underside recess of the band, as you can see here in this chart. Now identifying a bullish catalyst for Bitcoin, Clemente says that a growing amount of BTC is moving towards entities with very little history of selling. He says this particular metric is vastly different than what it was in May, right before the massive correction. Quoting him again here, illiquid supply has recovered nicely over the last week, showing that supply is moving to entities with low spending behavior, HODL greater than 75% of the coins that they take in. This is a lot different than what we saw back in May as the opposite effect took place. The analyst also says that the Bitcoin bulls can keep an eye on the funding rates. According to Clemente, funding rates across the crypto exchanges should maintain a neutral or negative trend before Bitcoin could kick off a new bull run. Quoting him again here, if you're a bull, you would like to see it continue to carve out a regime of mixed slash negative similar to what happened after September heading into October of last year. This would show uncertainty from perpetual traders. And if you theoretically saw funding muted as price grinds up, would mean that the market was amidst a disbelief rally. As you can see here in this chart, 
Smart and checking out the latest from crypto analyst Pentoshi. So what now? Bitcoin needs to reclaim fifty-two to $53,000. Currently, the local lower high, there's a ton of resistance there. By flipping bull there, we reduce downside risk and are still able to compound off the $60,000 shorts. And when Clemente responded to this, 53000 has been my line in the sand as well. Flip that and we are back in business. So there you have it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the on-chain analysts. And now for a quick recap of what I covered with you here in today's show. This monster bull move means that the whales could secure the next Bitcoin price surge. And as I shared from crypto analyst Cole Garner, he's predicting a $250,000 Bitcoin price. Also in today's show, I shared breaking news. Only 10% of the Bitcoin supply is left to mine, as well as Galaxy Digital's Michael Navigrats, bullish on Bitcoin and names three tailwinds for the leading crypto asset, as well as Bitcoin to flip bullish under this one key circumstance. According to on-chain analysts, Will and Clemente, where do you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to go next? Let me know in the comments right down below. Now for the top three comments from yesterday's episode. Wasim wrote, just checked your new profile pick and banner. Looking dope, bro. I've been watching your show since I got into crypto, and you are the only show I watch daily regardless of how busy I am. Thank you, my man. And I responded, Wasim, glad you dig the new anime profile pic and banner for the channel. Thanks for your continued support. Greatly appreciate it, fam. One love. Our next featured comment comes from G. Dean, who wrote, JV, great show as usual. I'm a big fan of Robert Kiyosaki and I have read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. However, we have to be careful and calling for a depression and scaring people. Buy Bitcoin because of inflationary government tactics and store value. But a worldwide depression is doom and gloom. That is going too far. There'll be big volatility in this great bull run. Stay vigilant and hot on. I responded, thanks for the feedback. Greatly appreciate it, fam. Hollow on. Let's freaking go. And our third and final feature comment is a quote by the notorious Satoshi Nakamoto that BitBud shared here. I don't believe a second compatible implementation of Bitcoin will ever be a good idea. So much of the design depends on all the nodes getting exactly identical results in lockstep that a second implementation will be a menace to the network. Touche. Boom. And thank you for spitting the facts. Satoshi for the win. Bitcoin to the moon. Send it. And to be featured on tomorrow's episode, drop me a comment right down below. Well, that's going to conclude today's show. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and journeying along with me inside this incredible crypto matrix. That's right. Bitcoin is the glitch in the matrix. And if you gain value out of today's show, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications that help me get to 100,000 subs. And I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's episode. Peace.